For as long as I can remember, no one moved like my father. A drummer as a youth, rhythm is his body. Also, as a former basketball player, you still can sense a dribble in his motions. When I was a kid, I didn't think anything was wrong with him. Other kids would ask me, why does your dad's neck shake like that? And I would respond saying that little did they know, but my dad actually had the strongest neck in the world. All of that movement was like what a push-up is to our biceps, except to his neck. That's it. Yeah. So, today's your last day of work? Supposedly, yes. Wow. <laughs> are you... How are you feeling? Well, um... I feel a little scared. <laughs> uh, but, uh... Looking forward to the surgery. No, my patients don't know what's happening. But uh, I've told them that I would be away at least for a month. Uh, my co-workers know, and uh, uh, yeah, and some of the family know, or friends. What are you going to miss most about going into work? Yeah, taking care of patients, taking care of other people who have problems and need help. What's the least thing you what are you not going to miss? Getting tired as I'm getting old and getting tired faster, especially when my neck doesn't cooperate. <laughs> Is the surgery going to help you work more or relax more? We'll see. The idea the uh, idea is to help me do whatever I want to do uh, more comfortably and better. That is the intention. Will that happen or not? We don't know. We will see. The uh, risk of surgery is very small, but uh, the success of this uh, is unknown because I've had it for close to 30 years, and I've waited that long <laughs> uh, to do the surgery. Um, and uh, so they don't know how I'm going to respond. So I have more movements uh, uh, and tremors, as they say it. Uh, the chance of improvement is, they say, about 70 to 80 percent, which is pretty darn good. And where are you getting it done? At UCSF, University of California, San Francisco. How long have you known about the surgery? I've known it for uh, probably 30 years, at least 25 years. When did it seem like it could be a possibility for you? Uh, actually, uh, five years ago, 2015. Uh, and a lot of this, and UC Davis told me that I had to do it right then. It was, uh, I could not wait any longer, <laughs> but I was not ready for it at the time. Um, but recently my symptoms are even worse, and as I'm getting older, uh, it's getting uh, harder to uh, cope with it. Yeah. With the movements and the pain. And it seems that the movements are actually getting worse as I'm getting older. Does that affect your driving, walking, well, uh, reading? It affects, it affects everything, but um, I have come to cope with it. Um, I continue to drive and sometimes I have to hold my head with my hand. Uh, especially in the turns and uh, that I want to 
turn to the left or the right. Um, but uh, thank God I have not had any accidents at all. Mm. <laughs> I'm calling with an important message about your health. To continue in English, please press 1. Uh, hello, this is UCSF Health calling with an important message about your health. Before we can continue, can you confirm that you are? Asan Chavier. Please press 1 for yes. Press 2. Great, thanks. We are calling to give you the results of your COVID-19 or coronavirus test that was done on July 25th, 2021. If you were tested because you were feeling sick, please press 1. If you were tested because you have an upcoming appointment or procedure, please press 2. Great, thanks. Your test results are negative. Please press 1 to confirm that you heard your negative test results. Or press 0 to repeat your test results. If you have questions about your upcoming appointment or procedure, please contact your provider's office. If you would like to request a copy of your test results, please call UCSF Medical Records at 415-353-2221. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Fifty percent? Okay. Uh, how much was it when you started? No, how much was it when you started? Okay, Farhad, can we? I don't know. Poor Sikhan, we can't make it. Any, did he scratch you with the shell? Kobe, I'm very few for some. Very, very Farhad, I'm in order. But check me, come on, boss. The other man told you just to sit for a half the day. No worries, buddy. استرس بود دیگه yeah. همش سرما می‌خوردم. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, فقط سر سبز دیگه یه مقدار اتیتو uh, هم هست که ترس. Mm-hmm. ترس یه بود بس ترس هست دیگه خب <laughs> بعد خود باز کرد. ایبو اونه که چیز یک بعد چیزا هست که سرس هم باشه ولی یه آبیت رو آره اونو نداشتم داشتم تا با بگیر جرده یه را تو یوتیوب بیدم گفتی یادت ازم میپرسیدم تو هیچ کدوم از این مراهل هیچ وقت شد بگی او مای گاد I'm not gonna do this گفتی نه فقط وقتی دیدم دیدم اونو یه گفتم او مای گاد بعد رفت چی؟ از اون که اومده بود که داشته فکر کردم یه همیشه پس از دهت هست دیگه اینکه اون تر یه کمی حراس ترس هم نایی کنی حراس یا اون فیلینگ کنترلش نکرده بودم اون اونه که یعنی انرژی میاره پایی بله بگر نه وقتی آب بیگ پرسی که آره I'm going to do better آره 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 یه سرس و سر نه داره بله درست It has been about 
20, 20 miles actually was the probably the most, uh, the, the least uh, commute that I had from Davis to Vacaville uh, here. Uh, yeah, always uh, has been a lot of commute. Uh, in New York, I used to drive about 55 miles one way uh, with the traffic and cold and snow and all those, yeah, for three years. <laughs> New way highways and 30 miles one way, 60 miles a day. Uh, yeah. It has been, but that commuting is a thing is a standard for American life. Most of the people are uh, driving and commuting longer distances than I have. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if that is directly related to worsening of my condition, but at least it's uh, coincidental. Yeah. In a short period of time, I can move to the left and to the right and, and see. Yeah. Uh, but I cannot hold it that. And overall, I am more comfortable moving. If I'm up and doing stuff, it is much easier than sitting down for a long period of time. Uh, so that, because that entails keeping my head straight forward and when I can't. That put more pressure. So I think in that way, uh, driving has a negative impact because I have to sit down for a longer period of time. The commuting, not driving, commuting. Um, even at home, if I sit down uh, and I'm not able to put my head in a way that it doesn't move, uh, then uh, I'd, I'd rather get up and walk and do stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons that I'm always doing things, uh, in part. Not only that I have attention deficit hyperactive disorder, <laughs> but also it's more comfortable for my neck. When I, even when I sit down and uh, lay my neck through the back of the couch or something, and try, can't hold it steady, after a while, my get get kind of uh, uh, frozen. Mm. My next freezes when I get up. It's kind of uh, I, I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to move a little bit to soften up. Uh, so for that reason, uh, commuting may have a negative impact because I have to sit down for a long period of time. So I have uh, I got this test up initially. I did not uh, trust its autopilot. And uh, then I got it for a trial, and still I was not comfortable. But then when my commute became a little bit uh, uh, longer than I thought it would, would have, uh, then I got the autopilot and tried it, and now I'm feeling comfortable. I'm using autopilot most of the time. but. I need to be uh, exercising my neck a little bit during the driving. Otherwise, it, it's less stress, it's less work, it's, uh, but I'm still sitting in one position yeah. for that period of time. So uh, that's why I, I try to look around and, and exercise my neck. Mm. Yeah while driving, but I can't do that because it's, the car is driving itself yeah. and I can do it without being stressed out. Hello. Hey. Hello. How's it going? Throughout my life, mm -hmm. I've never known my father to not be a hard worker. All right. There was a period of time where I remember him being around the house more, but even then he built out a whole underground sprinkler system and repainted our house. Supposedly that was the year he was thinking of going on disability because of the amount of pain he was in. He didn't. And has continued to work for 20 more years in one of the more intense medical fields as a physician of internal medicine and nephrology. Kidneys. My father's cervical dystonia has never stopped him. 
He's biked across states, become a licensed scuba diver, hiked mountains, and been a healer for thousands of people. Have you done it for today? Yes. Well, I can show you how okay. it's been done, right? Mm -hmm. This is with no control? This is with no control. This is uh, do what I really want to do. I'm supposed to relax. <laughs> and for how long do you do this? This is for one minute. And then I do the sensory trick, which stops my movement. And then try to hold it in the middle. And that's for another minute? That's for another minute. And is this supposed to monitor my movements, I believe. And this is going to record. So this is going to be before surgery and after surgery, it's going to be objective measurements. That's why, uh, my understanding. Mm -hmm. But if you need to probably speak with uh, Dr. Starr, who's the primary investigator. When did you start doing this? How uh, long before the surgery? Uh, to establish the, the baseline, I've been doing it for uh, probably uh, 10 days, two weeks, 10 days. And how long will you probably continue doing this after? Uh, after the surgery, the protocol is going to be different because they are going to be a recording of my brain activity from the uh, electrodes that I got to put in my brain. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be recorded. Uh, the first uh, is going to be on the 10th, August 10th. There's a whole day recording and protocols that I don't know. But they're going to be uh, frequent visits, which will be um, extensive uh, visits. I'm told that uh, there might be some sleep studies that, uh, let me put this back on. There will be sleep studies involved because uh, during the sleep, it stops. So they want to check the brain activity, I assume. So again, I'm not uh, completely familiar with the detail of the protocol. Uh, the the trial but these are my understandings my speculations <laughs> yeah well originally uh, when i approached uh, uh, ucsf about the study they wanted uh, uh, a recent neurology note and since i have not been seeing a neurologist regularly uh, I did not have that, and then and then it came, and uh, I put it off. I was feeling okay until my uh, neck pain deteriorated in uh, after November of 2020, and the movements got worse. So then I uh, got a referral from my own primary care physician to the neurologist. When I saw the neurologist and I told him about my situation, he immediately agreed to refer me for deep brain stimulation. So 
I was referred to UCSF, and then it was insurance uh, uh, authorization and uh, approval and all those things. And uh, then I had to, uh, since I wanted to uh, participate in the trial, uh, I spoke with uh, the uh, uh, investigator of the trial, this uh, PhD in, um, and uh, so he explained the trial a little bit more detail, and uh, then I had neuropsychology um, evaluation, and then I signed the consent forms. Um, virtually, we talked and so I signed them and sent them back to them. Um, and then uh, I have to step back. When I was <coughs> referred, so I met with Dr. Starr over the phone, over virtually uh, to the WebEx, um, and a neurologist in the UCSF to confirm the diagnosis and evaluate for uh, candidacy for UBS and explain the uh, pros and cons of the procedure. So all those, uh, uh, about trial started afterwards when I uh, mentioned that I'm uh, uh, interested in participating in that trial with Dr. Starr, then uh, I was referred to um, the uh, study uh, investigators, the trial investigators, and. Uh, neuropsychology evaluation, and then after that it was uh, arranging for um, kind of scheduling, if you will. The, the date of the surgery was scheduled on 28th, which is tomorrow, mm -hmm. and uh, everything was a kind of a preparation for that process. I had to take a class uh, virtually to explain again about the VBS and pros and cons. And uh, I had uh, two uh, phone calls uh, with uh, the nurses for pre-operation evaluation. And uh, actually, I, I forgot that as soon as I signed up for the study, a, a nurse called me and introduced herself. and. She made herself available at any time to me uh, if I have any question or concern. And she has been very helpful mm. in all this as well. Today I had a little bit nasal congestion and I was trying to get hold of that star and let them know. And that's why I later called uh, Susan, uh, the nurse, and she immediately responded and uh, got all the information and I spoke with that star. And, get the confirmation that it's okay and we can move on with the surgery tomorrow. Regular DBS is FDA approved and has been around for years and it has shown to be effective. But uh, the uh, DBS deep brain stimulator has to be adjusted uh, periodically to the best or optimum uh, activity, if you will, uh, for any individual. So. That will not happen immediately. It will probably will be identified or uh, defined over time. Uh, in the adaptive VBS, uh, there is a uh, receiver in the uh, stimulator as well as the stimulator. So the brain activity in the basal ganglia is being uh, collected. And based on those activity, the stimulation will be delivered. So when the activity is low, for example, when you sleep, then there's no stimulation. When I'm stressed and my movements are the worst, then the stimulation will go up. So it adapts to the activity of my brain, uh, which theoretically is superior and better than uh, the uh, conventional or regular BBS. But we don't know. We have to uh, uh, test it and uh, prove that it is superior. So in the 
after the perfect or optimum uh, frequency and amplitude of the stimulation is defined for me, then I will be on that for one month and one month on the adaptive activity and I will be blinded. I don't know which one is which, which one is conventional, which one is adaptive. And then I will do the same exercises uh, and other uh, observation to uh, determine or, or show objectively if my movements or uh, uh, contractions or whatnot it has, uh, is better with one versus another one. Well, um, two, two factors. One is um, I'm at, the, at the point in my life that anything happens, it will not be affected, it will, it will not affect my uh, financial status, if you will, uh, that much. I can retire right now if I need to. Uh, and my family are uh, hopefully okay. So uh, I don't have any that concern. But the, the other factor is when my movements got worse in January, I realized as I'm getting older, my condition is not going to stay uh, uh, stable, uh, stationary. And if it's going to get worse, uh, as I'm getting older, I may not be able to tolerate the surgery as well as I can do it now. So, and I don't know what other consequences I might have. The MRI of my neck cervical spine that I got yesterday, the report shows uh, uh, horrific changes that <laughs> I don't feel it, but uh, thank God. But uh, if they get worse, uh, the consequences of the dystonia itself is going to be worse than the risk of the surgery, in my opinion. So I need to take that risk to improve the quality of life and hopefully quantity of active and healthy life. Oh, but botulinum toxin injections, uh, different kinds. Uh, botulinum A, botulinum B, myoblock, and uh, zeomine injections. I tried all the different medications, cinnamon, artane, baclofen, uh, clomipine, um, and uh, tamitriptyline. I, I used uh, anything that could potentially help and most of them, the side effects was worse than the effect. My neck was still moving while I'm enduring the side effects of dry mouth and blur vision for, for our pain, for example, the anticholinergic one, and still my head was moving. Uh, cinema did not have any uh, real impact, but at the same time, I should say that all of those were subjective in assessment. There was no objective to say if it didn't work or did not work, like we are doing now with adaptive uh, DBS. Uh, but at the same time, I should have felt comfortable with those enough to continue, and they were not uh, that uh, effective. Uh, I did uh, acupuncture, acupressure, uh, I did qigong, uh, meditation, yoga, uh, and exercise uh, are the best way to cope. When I was uh, started doing uh, resistant exercise and weight, uh, that was the time that my uh, uh, both movements and the pain improved significantly. And uh, so as, as yoga, anytime I do uh, just a few yoga practices in the morning, uh, my at least uh, pain will get better and my uh, range of motion improves. Um, so exercise is still effective and I'm going to continue that as soon as I recover from surgery uh, because they are uh, amazing in, in, in uh, how well I feel <laughs> yeah. overall. But yeah, those are the... I went to a Chinese doctor and got the poachers and, and, and drag those <laughs> and brew that drag those and that doesn't work um, but I guess uh, 
I did uh, the last thing that I tried. Two things that I tried was one with uh, uh, Abigail Brown, who had the story, of, and she had a significant change of her lifestyle and improved her symptoms dramatically. And she did it with exercise and uh, faith-based. Uh, then I uh, saw that the Farias, Joaquin Farias in Toronto, that he has a um, extensive and comprehensive program for uh, dystonia and has, has shown significant benefit for many patients. Uh, and when I uh, started her practices and, and exercises and program, uh, my uh, posture was completely crooked. Uh, and uh, my posture improved significantly, but my movement got worse. And uh, he congratulated me and said, this is a good uh, start because usually the movement gets worse before they get better. But again, it has not improved as much as I expected, probably because I did not stop working. Uh, both of these programs uh, required me to slow down and stop working and I did not want to do that. I want to continue to work if I can. Okay. When my movements worsened in 1993, I was in the residency program and then fellowship program. And there was no uh, option for me other than move forward. Uh, so the work was not only uh, more difficult, it would take longer time. So I had to spend longer hours in the hospital, uh, which was another by itself difficult uh, um, part. Uh, but I uh, always found a way to cope with it because was, uh, I did not see any other option <laughs> other than coping with it. Uh, for a long period of time, I used to hold my neck uh, and walk around, um, and uh, I still can do it, but uh, I found the color to be a little more helpful, uh, because when I hold my hand, head for a long period of time, I feel numb in my hand and fingers as well, and uh, so I used to hold my neck and and write my notes. Uh, uh, and I just, I just uh, tough it up. <laughs> yeah. But that's the, the whole idea. At least it will uh, make it more stable and hopefully a better, in better control. It's not a cure, but even I'm told that 70 to 80% improvement in my movements, that is fantastic. So if instead of my neck just go everywhere, it would be just a little bit of movement. It had both sides. When I was in pain and tired, and um, I saw people who were complaining of much less than I am, I have, I'm enduring, uh, I was getting, uh, getting annoyed a little bit. How you are complaining of this, while well, I'm experiencing worse, and I'm still trying to care for you. But that is probably a natural response to my exhaustion. Uh, however, uh, it humbled me uh, in, uh, when uh, I ask people to do certain things and they cannot follow through is uh, inhuman, because I am not able to follow through everything that I've asked for. Uh, at the same time, I was able to help people with coping mechanisms that I uh, found working, uh, <clears throat> and I shared that with my patients, and I could encourage them. And there have been patients who told me that I inspired them, because I'm still working with this condition and they, that inspired them that they can uh, cope with their disease as well. But that is, uh, again, 
it's very variable from person to person uh, and their attitude. Um, but yeah, uh, my my conditional thing has helped and probably inspired many people. Uh, and one I remember it was nineteen ninety seven or six or seven. No, it was actually nineteen ninety nine. Uh, there was a family practitioner who asked a consultation from me, and I went to see his patient in the emergency room. It was probably about 10 p.m. And uh, I saw him looking at me with open mouth uh, around, and, and I said, uh, uh, is there everything okay? And he said, I'm just amazed how you can do this. <laughs> and. Uh, and that kind of threw me by surprise. And the other time was I went for a bike, bicycle ride. Um, it was uh, about 300 miles in three uh, and a half days. And um, so I finished it. And uh, another uh, individual came next to me in the bus on the way back. And he said that I just amazed how you can do it. And I said, what? What am I doing? And I would not notice that my head was obviously moving so bad that um, he know, everybody noticed that, but I was not in pain. And I was able to do it. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that people have seen me and uh, inspired some. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I, I think it has. Again, I think uh, bad thing happens in our life and we have a choice how to deal with them. And either we get stronger and move beyond above it or we succumb to it. And I try to do the first, the former. <laughs> For one is I, my head uh, has, a, I have a retrochorus and I have all three kinds. There are three kinds of uh, dystonia. A lateral cordis, retro cordis, uh, torticollis. And um, so I have a little retro cordis means that my head nod from the back. And especially when I walk, that happens. And people pass me and start to say, Hi, how you doing? <laughs> and I realize that <laughs> they're too by <laughs> nodding the head as, as saying that hi and <laughs> saying hello to them. I, that was not my intention, but that was very frequent that it happens. <laughs> yeah, people are fast with me because of that. And most of the kids will come and say, why are you doing this? And uh, when I try to explain, I don't know how to explain that, but uh, they try to mimic me and see how it feels. Uh, yeah, those are a few that I can remember of the funny. Uh, <laughs> stories, yeah. But I try to see it as a humorous as possible. That's another coping mechanism that I have. Yeah, yeah. you've got to be in your own uh, cocoon and, and uh, feel sorry for yourself or scared. And then uh, you realize, oh, there are other possibilities as well. One thing that uh, I'm very grateful uh, in my career this condition has never mentioned, and the quality of my uh, work and service that I provide has been always uh, seen. And with, uh, uh, so I'm I'm grateful about that because that was one of my concern always, how my patients are going to look at me as a disabled person, and how the employers or people who are going to offer position jobs to me, how are they going to see that? And it was completely opposite. Uh, my patients have probably appreciated me more because of this. And uh, the companies and uh, individuals that have worked with me has always uh, praised me for this and rather than the opposite. Yeah. Uh, so that was my own uh, thoughts that was uh, working against me yeah. at the beginning of my 
uh, life or, or this disease. Uh, I always had that self-consciousness. Uh, because of culture that I know, I never, I worked in Iran, but I never had this problem in Iran, this severity. So I don't know, but I assume, again, from what I uh, know of Iranian culture, at least when I was in Iran, that this would be, people would probably wouldn't come to me, they would have think that something wrong with me, uh, they, they get scared much easier, <laughs> like, I guess. But um, uh, I don't know, I cannot really say for sure because I've never worked with Iran with the condition. And when I go back, of course, the family and friends, uh, they don't ask me they usually approach either my wife used to ask my mother uh, uh, what's going on with my son. Uh, no one uh, asked me directly because they thought that they, they insult or offend me, if you will. Um, so, it, of course, everybody noticed this, but um, they did not have a direct conversation with me. Uh, when I when I write, uh, the first sentence is legible and then gradually becomes <laughs> straight line, uh, and uh, I I am more comfortable typing uh, than and writing, definitely, uh, especially that I can close my eyes and type uh, now. So even my neck is moving, I don't see what I'm typing, but I can type and then correct it afterwards uh, if there's a mistake. Uh, auto correction, for example, or uh, when it outlines, uh, underlines uh, all the in, incorrect spellings. So I can go on and correct those. Uh, uh, so that has helped a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, the, another example is now I can see patients from home. I can go to the chart and uh, assess and evaluate and give the recommendation as a consultant. Before, I had to go in person. Every time they called me for a patient, I had no choice other than go to the hospital, see the patient, and write a note for the patient in the chart, handwriting. If it is two o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter. Now, I can just open up a computer, go and look at all the information, and uh, decide what the problem is and, and give the recommendation. That's a major change. Yeah. I have not been needing to go to the hospital in person for the past couple of years, I think. Well, uh, definitely, I, I'm able to do a lot more than I could have without the technology. Uh, so it has made it easier for me to do what I have done, definitely. Uh, and if it was not because of technology, I could not do all the things that I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exciting times. Yeah. Exciting, very exciting times. Yeah. All the meetings I sh should have had traveled much more. Now we do virtual meetings all the time. Uh, we achieve more, our productivity is more, therefore it's faster pace. That is the negative side of it. That is going so faster than we can cope sometimes with. But at the same time, it makes it possible. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I've been sitting for a year, and uh, he was diagnosed with uh, cancer and doing chemotherapy, he lost a lot of weight. And, and uh, his attitude was pretty good. He said, I was told that I don't have more than six months, but I am doing the best I can. And it put uh, things a little bit, again, in perspective for me that this is a, <laughs> uh, uh, this isn't a death sentence. Yeah, path that we all are going to take. 
different ways. For him, it was cancer. For somebody, it would be accident. For somebody mm -hmm. else, it would be heart attack. But uh, the, the question is how to live the moment that you have left. Doesn't matter how you are, matter is how you're going to spend it. So, and that uh, just changed my attitude toward the surgery completely different mm -hmm. because whatever it is, I'm going to make the best out of it, mm -hmm. no matter what the outcome is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have the support of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so uh, comforting. That right, I have can someone. I give you a kiss? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. This is the Bud BBS that I got five years ago. Five years ago? <laughs> Bud BBS with the story. This guy, he was a professional guitar player in one of the symposium, the snail symposium, and he taught himself to play the other way. So it's still playing. Because <laughs> he had this thing in the Oh, no, no. <laughs> to support each other through your operations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
she handled it very well. I'm not sure if I can handle it. ¿Te hago sojo de esa? This documents his breaking point, but also a miracle. Deep brain stimulation has been around for a while, but brain surgery is no joke, and especially for someone who actively uses their brain. But deep brain stimulation has proven to be effective for various movement and neurological disorders, and my father is counting on that miracle. Would you, would you have done anything differently in the beginning? There's nothing to change. I yeah. Was, I tried the medication then. And then, her ears and mom just gave me Valium. Oh and my gosh. Valium. Just, just, just to sleep. Yeah. So I was thinking of that. Sleepy. So I was thinking that I was going to parties or anything. <laughs> He's so freaky. This was the devil of the time. Wow. <laughs> How old were you when you went to see somebody for anxiety? I didn't go to anybody. They just gave it to you? <laughs> I was taking it, but it was really not everything is available over the counter. They just moved in. Oh, uh, well, 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 What are the different sports you pursued? Different sports? Yeah. 
Well, soccer is something that everybody plays. You so I was playing it. when I was a kid, mm -hmm. before high school, junior high. And do they, uh, it was a myth or misconception that if you play basketball, you're going to be taller. <laughs> and so, uh, Um, when I went, I had no idea about basketball. When I went to junior high, due to, due, due to early puberty, I was the tallest. <laughs> so they took me into the team and they, they taught me how to play basketball and played me until high school. There was passion. Last year, it was real high, basically, mm -hmm. ninth grade. Then, uh, after summer, everybody was taller than me. All of a sudden. In one year. But I had, there was a lot of investment, investment on me, so I kept going. <laughs> but I liked it. I liked basketball. It's uh, fast and focused. And in terms of skill and stamina, and so it has a combination of everything. It's like a ballet sometimes, right? Okay. Very good. So, I will play basketball then. I did tennis for a few years and top of basketball. Volleyball was again, was a game that everybody was playing, so it was not a specific sport that I was doing. When I did the tennis tournaments, I never won anything, but I was getting good at it. That was something that I like about basketball and tennis. I learned, I taught myself skiing. Oh, uh, water skiing was the other thing in the summer we used to do. Water skiing? Yeah, water skiing. So, Boba didn't drive a boat? No. Boba never did. <laughs> Boba never did any sport. <laughs> Not even horseback riding? He was, uh, no. Chess? No, Baba Jun was doing taps of that. Taps, 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 <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. That's not the sport. <laughs> That's the game. It's true. <laughs> This is sexy. Yeah. Untouchable. I was coming out of anesthesia in the uh, recovery room, and there was another girl the other, behind the other curtain crying. I said, what happened? She said, some people would come out of anesthesia, some people laugh, some people cry. <laughs> I said, it's so sad. I, I'm going to go in and give her a hug, comfort her. And I was choking up. <laughs> oh, then you started crying. Yeah. <laughs> it was like nursery. <laughs> More kids started crying. Everybody cried. <laughs> yeah, the, the room the nurse said, oh, so you're an empath. <laughs> <laughs> they could. Okay. Go. Hi. 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 Hi.
Shahmir, S-H-A-H-M-I-R. Yes, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Um, is she going to help me check in for this yes. procedure? Yes. Okay, for both of you, I'll talk. Know your way around these places? Uh, I, I was here the other day. Oh, I see. Hey, <laughs> 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 you excited? Uh, yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I let go yesterday. Uh, when I, I realized that I was making myself sick, mm -hmm. but my attitude, yeah. I changed my attitude dramatically. Yeah. And I said, let go. Why, why are you resisting or thinking about it? Eliminating. So not only my mental congestion went away, <laughs> yeah. but also I'm dizzy with it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just floating now. Opportunity, what are we doing? Exactly. Whatever it is, it's going to be okay. Yeah, we got to make it. we got to make it okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. I haven't, but I don't know what you're doing. I've already walked up the stairs because I'm not wrong with the roller. I thought I was going to do it earlier. Okay, wait. Thank you so much. I love you too. You have. Thank you. And then he's now under uh, just waking up from his general anesthetic that we did for the last part of the surgery. And so he's still in the operating room waking up, and then he'll be coming out into the recovery room um, shortly in a few minutes. Oh, that is so exciting and so good to hear. Yeah, it seemed like it was a very long procedure, but I got all the notifications that it was going well, so I just trusted that it was going smoothly. Yeah, it pretty much went as normal. I mean, Wednesdays, of course, we don't start till 8.30. Other days we start at 7.30, so it does seem, it always seems to me, too, like we're finishing a little bit later. But it's just a lot of surgery. We had four, four electrodes in the brain, and then, and, and then there's two more parts of the procedure where we tunnel down the right neck and chest to a pulse generator and then we start again on the left and tunnel down that side so it's kind of three separate surgeries in one day totally yeah so wow. it's, it's a lot yeah and are you are you staying with him um here during his recovery yeah um i'm here until like the 10th but my mom is here of course like full time okay. for him yeah so. okay yeah okay great uh so He'll be um, in the recovery room probably for a couple hours, and normally they don't let the family in there. He, he, they have people wait until uh, he's uh, up in his room on six long. So okay. he might check in with surgical waiting in maybe two hours just to see if he's gotten a room yet up in six long. Okay, good to know. And, okay. like, so that's, like, a possibility even today, or is that something just to, like, oh, look yeah, forward it should to? Be. I mean, very rarely uh, they, with a hospital super full, it may take a long time. They don't get up to six long till you know, in the evening. Um, but uh, usually, yeah, it's, it's just two or three hours in the recovery room. Okay, and who did you say I call again? Sorry. Oh, you would call, you know, the surgical um, waiting area that uh, yeah. uh, you checked in at? Mm -hmm. um, they they would be able to you know to know the other people you could actually call directly is um, six long and I can give you their number uh, and the nurses station at six long and maybe a bit later. Okay, cool. No, that's great. And um, congratulations to all and thank you so much. Oh well, thank you. It's such a pleasure to work with. He's so motivated, you know, for this for this study and for this treatment. It's really really nice to work with him. Yeah, and will you be around in the following days, or? Yes, um, I, well, I'm going to see him um, in a couple hours, uh, either in the recovery room, if he's still there, up on six long, and I am, even though I'm at a different hospital tomorrow, I'm going to try to come in uh, in the morning to, to see him, and for some reason I couldn't, what I do is I call, I call him and talk to him on the phone, okay. and see how things are going, but yeah, 
uh, you'll be, he said something like you were making a film about, about this, is that right? Yeah, I've just been recording some of the process. I think for me, it was so helpful to have access to just like what's out there right now, you know, and seeing other people go through it. And I've yeah. just always had these like media skills that I don't necessarily use as like a filmmaker, but like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've, I've worked in the arts a lot and uh, I just, it's very like casual, but I'm hoping to put something together that is like comforting to people who might be like considering this and like just generally people who, you know, are um, going through something similar to like dystonia where um, you, you can feel so hopeless for so long. Like this has just been so exciting because like I, I never knew that there would be like something that could be so uh, effective potentially, you know, he's gone through like so much, like everything yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> like I remember him doing like handstands at like dawn. Cause like some Chinese medicine doctor told him to with like, I was like yeah. describing all the things I've seen him do, hoping that something happens. And so I'm yeah. just so hopeful. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this therapy. The one thing to, to know is, is if you've had symptoms for a very, very long time, like he has, yeah. it can take quite a while yeah. for benefit to come in, and then the total benefit may be somewhat less than a person who's had it, like, you know, five or eight years. For Nevertheless, sure. I, you know, I'm optimistic that it will give him some, some, some important benefit. Yeah. Um, I mean, we did it, have a patient who had had, had you know, 25, 30 years of, of, of dystonia who took about two years to reach, reach benefit. I think it will be quicker in him because he has that tremulous component of the mm, head yeah. that re tends to respond quicker than the more fixed uh, component. Um, but I guess I'd just say, you know, have patience is my, my, what I'm trying to say. Oh, I mean, again, we've waited so long that, like, that's going to be nothing. And, you know, like, just even that there is, it's gotten so much worse, you know, in the last couple of years. I've just seeing it. And, you know, again, he's continued to try therapies and, um, you know, so. And he's still looking to continue some of those, knowing that, you know, this isn't 100%, you know, sure. going to fix everything. Sure. But, you know, I think especially yeah. after that MRI results about his neck and just how much it's yeah. impacted. Did, yeah. you know that really like yeah, gave him the confidence to, honest, to go it, through it, it could have been worse there someone who's had this joint for so long i have to see worse spine up he does have significant spinal canal narrowing um at the c3-4 level and that may or may not need like surgical attention in the future so we'll just have to monitor that carefully um but yeah he is he you know he's definitely having the neck uh, movement set him up for uh, spinal canal problems but again it's not as bad as i've seen it, so. that's also really great to hear because yeah no he saw that and he was like okay this is perfect timing <laughs> like i need to yeah. to get this done yeah. so yeah, thank you done. so much okay, dr great. star well, um, hopefully i'll see you at uh, a rounding uh, this evening or tomorrow morning sounds good yeah definitely we'll be in all touch right. all right thank you so right, much have, have a good afternoon you too bye-bye bye, -bye. <laughs> I have not used it yet. Yeah. I use only Tarot. I'm going to use it tonight. That's why I'm leaving my phone to listen to Pink Floyd. I love you. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know what's funny? I almost wore the pink... Like, what shirt should I wear? I almost wore that Pink Floyd shirt in the... in the dresser, the old one from 94. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other these these Yeah. Is the hole or is it uh is it a hole or is it just the roof? But that that I think you got four of them, so that looks like yeah, one of four. These were two of, ah. Oh okay. That, okay. Yeah. That means Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did that play? Okay, cool. All right.
Looks like you're ready for the soccer games tonight. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll catch up with you in a little bit. Um, you got the call bell. If there's anything you need, let me know. Um, no, don't need CT scans. Uh, getting hydrated. Yeah. Uh, how's blood pressure been? Uh, it's good. I think it's like 100 or whatever. Yeah, it's normal there. Okay. Uh, it's normal there. 106 over 60. Okay. Heart rate 71. Okay, great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sheila came. Uh, all of a sudden, it was a jerky movement to my head, and I became too sleepy. All of a sudden, I don't know if I moved anything inside or, or not. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, no, I doubt very much that you moved anything okay. inside, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, everything went really well. You had a lot of stuff done today, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's normal to not feel great, especially normal to be very sleepy, right? Yeah. That was good to sleep as much as you want. Uh, and the pain is mostly in the acetatic uh, uh, frame spot. Oh, really? We're like here and here? Yeah. Okay. Nothing in the incision of the scalp. How about the neck? That, that all? No. Is. Okay, good. Those are that's, tolerable. Okay, that's good. Well, that should get better tomorrow. You've got, uh, there's a, the bandages have a little bit of drainage on them, and that's mm -hmm. normal because um, I, I put powdered vancomycin, you know, on the mm -hmm. device, and just through osmotic pressure, it sucks in water. And then that can be a little bit leaky through the incision yeah. for there, so so don't worry that there's some sort of leakage. Sure. Right, that's kind of normal. We'll change your bandages tomorrow, or the next day, so before you leave the hospital. Okay, to give you fresh ones. Um, good. Well, everything went great. I can actually show you. I have. I took some snapshots on my phone of the oh. of the image fusion of the leads with the um, pre-op MRs. So you kind of see where everything is. It all looks really good. I'm very happy about that. That big donut around your head, yeah. that was a, um, a cone beam CT. So it's not a real CT scan. I didn't but see it that really. I didn't see it. Didn't see it, yeah. It was just a machine that yeah. can take regular x-ray, but also can do a CT-like image, which we use to fuse to your pre-op uh, MRIs, just so that we can see. Uh, this, has a, this is just an iPhone shot, so it's... You know, it's not that great, but yeah, if you want to put your glasses on. So this is the axial MR that you had pre-op, and uh, the little white dots yeah. are the fusion of the uh, CT scan images, so we blended the two. So it's basically the intra-op lead location, you know, all fused with the MRI. So that looks really good. It's hard to see the anatomy, but it's right where targeted. That's the cutamen. Well, you see it on this cut at the junction of the external and internal pallidum. You may have to take my word for that. Uh, and that looks really good. And then the um, on the cortical sensors, those look really great also. Um, this is your sort of a, a sagittal MR, uh, off of parasagittal, the four contacts of the sensor. And you can see the central sulcus is the deeper sulcus there. So I have two contacts on um, pre-central gyrus and two on post-central, which is where we want it. That was one side, and then um, exactly the same thing on the other side. Yeah. So there's the central sulcus, and you have nice contact there. So yeah, really happy with everything. We kind of have all that. Oh, did you want to see any of that? Yeah, cool. Sure. Sorry, I didn't. It's all good. Uh, let's pull that up again. Yeah, so this is the oh, wow. uh, brain. The eye is up here. Yeah. And those are the electrical contacts, the, the cool. sensor ones on top. This was you know, one of the deep leads going in. Mm -hmm. And then I have the... Uh, so it's like two deep ones and then the, the two, two deep two ones and two, and two surface ones. Yeah. Okay. And this is you have to kind of know the anatomy to really appreciate it. Yeah. The little white triangles or the CT leads. Yeah. And those are in in a, a very good location here in relation to the basal ganglia. So I was happy to see you know, see all that. Just That's so cool to look at. Recordings and whatnot. It's just a matter of getting some rest, getting fully out tomorrow, getting PA. He yeah. comes out tomorrow with this charger? Uh, the, no, the Foley will come out tomorrow. Oh, I see. After, I see. Uh, tomorrow. And mm -hmm. then he probably get you home on uh, Friday. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate you. Questions for me?
though, if I wake up tomorrow, all would be good, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you did great. Uh, the anesthesia team, I thought, did a nice job with the deck sedation. Would you remember it being very rough on you, or was it okay? No. Uh, uh, it was great. Okay. It was a little bit of this movement, in the, like this, but it was, uh, out, yeah. It was it's okay. I would have did that. First your job, I always do. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the dexmedetomidine drip I hope helped, you know, with that awake yes, part because yes. you were still responsive. But I could I could hear everybody, I could understand. Good. But my speech was a little bit slurred. Yeah. So people could not hear me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, especially when you had the nasal trumpets. Oh that's, yes. that's that's really a really good thing. Okay, great. Um, so uh, my, uh, the, the research team will be in tomorrow also to show you, uh, mid-morning tomorrow, to, sh to give you some equipment that you'll take home. Will you okay. be here? Tomorrow? I can be here, okay. yeah. That would be great. Just what so time? I think it's going to be around 11. Okay. I think so. Um, and they will you know, give some computer equipment that you will take home, also a recharger equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can show you how to use it. You know, sometimes people are like, feel good, wide awake, want to do it. If you don't feel well, you, know, you don't have to learn anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's the plan for tomorrow. Great. Cool. All right. Well, excellent. We'll have to. Yes. Don't worry, take as much risk as you can. What is a Quick recording today. Sure. Um, you won't have to do anything for that. Okay. We good. will also show you how to recharge your stimulators in your chest. Okay. And um, we can always review it next week as well. Mm -hmm. Do some practice. Just want to check in with you as well. How are you? How are you feeling? How did you go yesterday? I was. Uh, I'm very good. Well, I'm very now. Very stand up. I get a little nausea. You get a bit nausea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because my head still moves when I stand up. Yeah. I have to hold it, and now I don't know where to put my hand on. Okay. Can <laughs> You can't do the usual sensory trick. Yeah. yeah. So I said, but it still moves, and it seems that my brain is kind of loose inside. So uh, I feel that after a while. I get nausea, a little bit headache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I have to lay down and rest. Good. It'll go away. You can rest, fully yeah. rest, yeah. How does the head feel if you're just lying still? Uh, it's just the, uh, this doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. It's pretty good. Okay. These are tolerable. The only pain is this tunneling in the, this side. Yeah. Okay. This side is not that much, but this side is. Got it, yeah, got it. Okay. How what was your experience with the surgery like? Uh, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, uh, I don't remember anything else other than the part that I was awake. Yeah. I don't know if it was one hour or. It was or, a bit longer than that, but yeah. yeah, I saw these scans this morning. Dr. Star shared them, and they look really yeah. good. The placement, he's really happy with all yeah. the electrodes. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's yeah. really good. It was such an interesting. Look, they were putting the clips. Yeah. The anesthesia was going away. And yeah. I, I said, well, a few more clips are not going to kill me. Because if they put the needle in, it's going to hurt too. So, so let me, and every time that they were clicking, my neck was moving. Like, oh, this one, this one. What? It was uh, it, uh, it so like it's a super sensitivity, yes. like a myoclonus. Yeah, myoclonus? Yeah. What, what's the relationship with the pain here? <laughs> there? I, I have no idea. But it was interesting. That was the most interesting part. Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. Saying. That is interesting. Yeah. Have you noticed any change in your dystonia at all? Yesterday, I thought that it was less. Yeah. A little bit. But A little bit. Today, it's back to back to normal. So for you, you'd always be pretty still if you were lying down. Uh yes. Yeah. I think yeah.
a much more calm. On this, on this, uh, any time that I have a kind of a stressful thing in my mind that I'm thinking about, yeah. even when I'm laying down, it pulls to the right and, and starts to move. Yeah. So I have to start meditating and body scanning and then calm back. Good stuff, okay. And you, you're both happy with, with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, more than happy. I didn't want to expect. I was expecting much more pain and Good. discomfort. But yeah, you seem very bright and alert. I think and... I, yeah. Oh yeah, he was, he was doing good last night too. Cool. When I came in, he was, I came in and he was like, Because <laughs> <laughs> we keep joking, he's become a cyborg. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, Bobby's been sort of the lead coordinator on this project for a long time. Is the person who sort of most uh, knows the most about how all the hardware works and everything like that. So obviously you've got the devices in the chest, but Bobby's definitely taken us through explaining what all the bits are as you go. Sure. Cool. Bobby is our AI expert. Exactly. Very <laughs> cool. All right. So I'll give you a more detailed explanation of how the data collection works okay. um, at the next research visit. And yeah, today we're experiencing some short recordings just while you're sitting here. We use these devices. I'll give you a little sheet too that lists all the devices that we're going to give you and okay. the purpose. And we like acronyms, so we have a lot of them. <laughs> so these ones we call CTMs. CTM. CTM. They stand for Communication Telemetry Module. Okay. And basically, you put these over your devices. Yeah. And they will transmit the data from your device in your chest to your computer okay. via Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. And we have a custom program that will do the recordings as well. Okay. And we'll actually be giving you this computer to use for data collection. And uh, now, we are going to start the resume what I was doing before. Uh, we think probably after day 10. So you will come back, you'll have your stitches checked, okay. your stitches taken out. At the moment, it's just recovery time. Okay. And then letting the brain recover as well. So you um, take the time off. Okay. Time off, exactly. <laughs> so this time is really just the data we're going to be recording today is just to check all the yeah. settings, the hardware, and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this strap over you. And is your chest still really sensitive no. to the pressure? No. Okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, just coming on this side here. Sorry, Nate, you know, that's good. You can make just position it like that. Does that feel okay on your yeah. chest? Okay. All right, and I'll just go ahead and start our program. I see a little pressure makes the pain less. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's good. We were talking about that the other yeah. day. <laughs> Gameplay, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll try to establish a connection. This can take some troubleshooting at first, but we'll see if we get lucky. And so just for the family and everyone else, so he's got electrodes on both sides of the brain, mm -hmm. some yeah. deep electrodes, and then he's got some electrodes on the so top of the brain called the cortex. <laughs> Each electrode has so four, four electrodes in, and each of them has four contacts on. So there's 16 plates that we can record from. Um, and then in the deep part of the brain, we only do the stimulation in the deep part of the brain, and use the surface part of the brain for the genetics. So there's one device on each side, and Bobby's just connecting those right now. Um, yeah, so we're connected. That was easy. We were lucky first try, and we are collecting your brain data right now. Wow. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to get off the bats a little bit? So you can have a Think of wait until day 10 before the dance okay. thing. Do you know any good dance moves? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah he loves dancing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely have to do that. I actually, I wanted, I wanted to go to tap dancing, but. Uh, <laughs> Tap dancing? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I was thinking tap dancing would be fun for yeah. re uh, mm -hmm. wiring my brain. Oh, you're very <laughs> percussive. Yeah. Tap dancing or maybe break dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little bit different. Yeah. 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 So tap dancing, you have uh, coordination with your yeah. hands and, and legs. And so you can see that will probably. Two, three, 
Yeah, that's true. Break down the spin on your head. You can't get one to Yeah, I don't want to do that. Far enough, and then that's a good start. Yeah, if you're curious. Recording screen looks like too, oh, wow. for left side and right side. It gives a little description of like the settings, like the frequency, interesting, the amplitude, which is zero, uh -huh. the therapy status, which is off, okay, and the stem contact. Interesting. And you can see the status of each side is connected. The green circles, and there's the time as well. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, if I have to wait, get up. Change, um, do any activity. The brain signals, yeah, will definitely change. Um, these will remain connected. Yeah. I'll go over more details, but usually you want to be wearing those CTMs, so oh. remotes, and you want to have the laptop in the same room. Yeah. And, and how long do you want to do that? Uh, we'll go over more details, but it usually there can be some long recordings over several hours. Okay. Um, so it kind of takes a little bit to get used to the how used the program and devices and um, keeping everything charged. But overall, it's it's not too hard most of the time. You just sure. want to wear them. We also have a a vest you can wear. It's a it's a pretty stylish fisherman vest. <laughs> and we got it so we can slide these it's guys cool, in the yeah. pockets and just you know wear the vest and that works pretty well. Yeah. Um, Before I was uh, telling my wife. Uh, a couple of months ago, when I knew that I was going to participate, I said I need uh, those uh, shirts, and they have two pockets. Yeah. <laughs> and I, was, exactly. I thought that you, I don't know if it was like this. I thought if, if these can be put on those pockets. Yeah. Yeah. So. Exactly. I already thought about it. They <laughs> <laughs> are already ahead of us. Yes. Yeah. It's a little tricky because they're pretty long. So you got to have yeah. some deep front pockets and you gotta have two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not very common, but... So, yeah. I'll take you. <laughs> but a lot of hunting, we found one that works pretty well. Um, but this is what the screen looks like. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We'll go over more details, too, but just to give you an idea. So, so you look... Uh, I mean, what kind of data are you getting? It's got to be brain base or...? It's it's brain data, so it's what's called local field potential data, which is around each of the electrodes, even though they're quite small by kind of our standards, they're like about a millimeter across. Yeah. By brain standards, they're quite big, so they're near many thousands of, electro of neurons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so the signal called the local field potential is the aggregate signal of all the local neurons. Yeah. So it gives you an idea of really how much the, the neurons are firing together and how much they're firing independently. When they fire together, you get these oscillations and then we pick up on those oscillations. And we think there's a specific oscillation related to dystonia at around five to, five to six cycles a second, when all these nerve cells start talking to each, to each other and start, um, start synchronizing at that speed. And that's what we use to then try and control the stimulation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I was thinking uh, you may want to uh, look at the relationship between the nasal ganglia and the cortex. That's exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. So we can look at the cortex, we can look at the basal ganglia, but we can look at the communication between the two. Exactly, yeah. And we think there's, there's good communication, which is probably in short bursts of increased coherence between the two sides. Yeah. The two sides talk to each other. That should come in these short little bursts. But we think in movement disorders, you get these sustained periods where the two get kind of locked together and it prevents them doing other useful processing. Yeah. So that's sort of part of the hypothesis. Yeah. 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 Whenever I do something, I talk or walk, the movement gets worse. Yes. Yeah, that's very common in the stem, yeah, exactly. So it's called sort of overflow movement. So we can look at those kinds of things going forward. But yeah. Initially, that was, my neck was only tilted to the right, this way, like this. Yeah. Only when I was walking. Oh, really? That, that's how it started. I said, what's happening? And then, 
headphones on, so just I do want to study a little bit. So I went to one of my uh, classmates who was a duology resident at the time. And he said, yeah, you're right, it's the dystonia. Mm -hmm. So that started when I was 27. Yeah. Yeah, 1983, a second year of residency, we got three back. Yeah, yeah. And fellowship, and it was bad, bad, and until in 2000, I stopped working full time, working part time only. Yeah. For a year to recuperate. Okay. And then I got better. Yeah. I got better from 2001 until now. I was doing fairly well. Yeah. Ups and downs sometimes, we yeah. paid and but was doing well. I, so, but this time it was bad again. I said, I need to go and have to start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, see what happens. It's see, not, okay. If nothing happens, if nothing help, I will score one. I just have a surgery. Yeah, exactly. But at least now, I know that I'm going to contribute something to the research, which is. Uh, give me more hope. Yeah. That's great. Purpose, not hope. Purpose. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think also just knowing that you've tried everything, that's yeah. useful uh, to some people, and some people get a some people get a useful response. Some yes. people get less response. So yeah. we'll see. We won't know until we turn that turn yes. the stimulation on. Yeah. Turn it on and adjust it. So yeah. Yeah. We have a few months to go yeah. before we call it up. <laughs> yeah, it would be I guess yeah probably four or five weeks until we turn, think about turning it on. Who I was talking to today, I said, well, I have a four year, uh, I have a job for four years, at least, and that's my research. <laughs> the other one, we'll see if I can continue or not. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a secure job for four years. <laughs> <laughs> we do, you're, you're definitely one of our keenest patients to <laughs> provide data, so, you know, we're, we really support that and we are thinking and have devised uh, a research protocol that supports that. But also we don't want it to completely take over your life yeah. at the exclusion of other things. So um, that's important. So who we'll wanna Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. So we've done successfully the first recording and now we're on to the second one, aren't we, Bobby? Um, yeah, I actually did the, the second one already, so we just have the, the montage, montage right. which I'm just going to double check the settings in here. Yeah, Dogs and Stars just on its way down. Oh, great. It'll be a party. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to interfere with any, you know, brain data. Okay. Yeah, so how are you feeling? I feel good. And when I stand up, uh, I get all the headaches and this and that. Okay. And nausea, nausea. Yeah, nausea. you know, part of that is probably from the intracranial air. Yes. Right? It's, so it's like a spinal tap type yeah, yeah. headache where you have sort of, you know, low yeah. pressure in that air. Um, so that, that gets better, you know, you get better each day. Yeah, the, the bombers that you talked about yesterday, I was feeling them this morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bubbles coming, coming out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's right. That's uh, bubbles yeah. coming out of your yeah. your intracranial space, right, and getting absorbed. So the more I shake it, the better shake it. It's not like it's going to come up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you get some rest last night? Uh, every two hours I have to sleep, yeah. <laughs> They were doing oh, check every two hours. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a chill last night. I had a bad chill. Uh, I think it was midnight. Okay. But then, at, there was no fever at the time, of course. But then later on, it was 99.1 something. Okay. But then I was feeling so hot. Because they, they turned the uh, 
every time this is off. Okay. We made it to the room because we walk and then I had too much black on myself. Okay. So it was, uh, okay. so I think, uh, I don't know, it was, and then I took a lot of deep breath and coffee. Yeah. I yeah. felt maybe a little afflexis. Exactly. Those, those fevers or chills in the first, you know, 24 hours or so are often from the anaphylaxis, you yeah. know, a little alveolar collapse from yeah. anesthesia. And so that's, so that's why I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was too coward. I think, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and have you been uh, walking at all? Yes. Okay. Go to pass through, we'll cross my feet. Okay, yeah. good. Well, all right. And that looks like the, someone changed your bandages. Yes. Surgical uh, resident. All right. Sick of the Dr. 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 Uh, probably Jason Chung. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did that. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and yeah, he 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 seemed to feel that he, he that he was going to send you home today. But I told him, oh, only if you really wanted to. That you, most of our folks stay two days. Yeah. And did you talk to him about that? Yeah, he wants to send me home initially. I told him about when I was awake yesterday. Okay. It's ten seven. It was interesting when I would do the trips, and the anesthesia was going away. I didn't want to get more anesthesia local, so I. This was popping it up. But interesting part was every time that were creeping and I was feeling a little pain, not too much, a little pain, but I had mild problems in my legs. I have no idea what the relationship it could be. Mm -hmm. I had no control, my right leg was jumping up, my left was jumping up. This is when we were closing the scalp? Yes, yes. Okay. Was uh, that stately? Yep. Yeah. And then at the end, I heard uh, your PG-14. Resident, uh, she RT, yeah, RT, yes. She said that uh, all this thing was good, and this one <clears throat> right here is it seems like not good. And I thought she had a little left over, it was not completely cold. So when Jason was changing the dressing, he noticed that I took pictures of it to show it to you. Okay, I'll take a look. He may have yes. sent that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if it, you know, just one or two staples isn't quite symmetric in them, yes. yeah, then, then we just take them out and put them on, put them back on. But yeah. So that, that's why I think he, initially he wants to send me home. When he saw those staples, he said, I think he needs to stay one more day. Okay. It will be better. So I, I cannot see. I just heard that I was just passing all right all right good I'll, I'll check in with him but yeah normally you, know, you had a lot done yesterday yes so i wasn't that anxious <laughs> to send you home yeah you, no, you I'm guys not, agree I'm with not, that i'm yeah. not rushing okay. i'm not rushing either <laughs> okay good yeah. good so yeah and uh hopefully tonight can be a little bit better and we can get you off the q2 hour uh, <laughs> <that was tomorrow. laughs> yes so in that part i think i'm doing well okay okay great um you doing okay with still doing montage, or do you need to do something else? Yeah, we have about four minutes left, okay. and then we can go over okay. uh, recharging. Okay. okay. That's, that's all I have for today. Okay, great. Did you guys have any questions or anything for me? Hmm. Um, yeah, when he comes home, activity levels and stuff like that, I feel like Maybe he's the kind of patient who needs some boundaries. <laughs> no hand No, I cannot do that. And one thing uh, Monica was saying that uh, we should not raise the hand above the head. Not a lot. I mean, you know, doing you know, reaching up for a can in a cupboard is fine, but no, no exercises <laughs> where, yeah, yeah, where, yeah. You, where you're doing that because these things are healing, and yeah. so. The main thing for until your incisions are healed is to be up walking every day. That's good. You know, yeah. you know not be in bed at all. Yeah. You shouldn't do it. But I wouldn't do any serious exercise. Sure. Right? Anything that's going to get you hot and sweaty yeah, or aerobic yeah. and nothing with a lot of upper body muscle. Okay? Yeah. So I would say certainly two, you know, two, two weeks, the first two weeks should be that way. Just lots of walking. Yeah. Nothing sweaty, nothing vigorous with upper body muscles. And the walking, you mean outdoors? Yeah, you can be. Uh, if, if, you if absolutely can be, as long as you, you are not feeling go. dizzy. And, but and, as long as it's... Yeah, once this air goes away, you know, probably in a couple of days, you'll feel more like walking. Right. On the side. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, just don't be out, you know, when it's really hot, right? right? Nice. Getting super sweaty. So that, that can affect your incisions. And for how long? Like, if it was too... 
for each for every for day. Each you mean, uh -huh. You know, like, that's really up to how you feel. I mean, oh, if okay. you if you if in a few days you want to go out and walk for for an hour, that's okay. Uh -huh. My okay. my main criteria: yes. don't exhaust yourself, yeah. don't get right. hot and sweaty. Yes. Yeah. All right. 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 That's, otherwise, it's good to be up moving around. Yeah. Right. That's okay. good. Good. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, all right, and then after a couple weeks. You can phase in a little more light exercise if you do a little light yoga or that kind of thing that you like is okay. Uh -huh. But really, it's a month until we have you do things like swimming or you know, yeah. immersion. Right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. But I don't full, act, full activity usually yeah. after a month. Yeah. Sure. yeah, and no driving, right? For solid you know, it's 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 best to wait a month because right. mm -hmm. you know with all the the, the bilateral implant, you can get some frontal lobe effects on both sides, subtle impairments and judgment, reaction times that you're not aware of sure. could be risky. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's safer to go a month. Uh, sure. And then obviously off work we talked about yes. for at least a month. Yes. Uh, How about focused work? What in terms of what? Like reading or making some like working with hands. Yeah. Look, you're an active guy. Social I'm, media uh, like, yeah, I, I you know, <laughs> wouldn't put any particular restrictions on, on that. I mean, you know, I don't know how obsessive <laughs> you are, but like, don't, don't spend 10 hours a day right. you know, no, on a screen. Right. You can't no. take it easy a bunch. Of us. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't right. have specific rules on that, okay. uh, basically. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know if we've met in person yet. Actually. Mariam, Mariam, very nice. Okay, pleasure, pleasure yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. My gratitude. Other, other questions? Is there like anything that can interfere with the technology? We were just talking about radio a little bit, and I was like wondering if there's, I know like probably metal detectors are not something we should maybe go through anymore. So the, the, the main thing is we've talked about, you have to be very careful about those MRI scans. Yes. And if anyone requests, you know, or there's an MRI on you, then you have to talk to us and sure. figure out how to, how to get it done. Okay. That's the best way. That's really the main thing. Um, there's probably other so, so regarding the basic therapy and the devices. Now regarding this data streaming and that sort of thing, I don't know if you guys want to, Bobby, you want to comment on that. If, we, if there's certain things that you know, he needs to do for data streaming, maybe you have introduced um, that to him yet. Yeah, we can go more details at the 10-day visit, but okay. mostly just having the strap on of the devices and with the communicators and having the laptop in the same room. Um, yeah, that's, that's the basics. The airport doesn't matter. So, so you know, the people often ask about security. So <clears throat> your device, like any implanted metal device, can set off a security alert, right? It should not um, harm you or the device. Okay. In the old days, a uh, security system could sometimes turn off the device. That, was all yeah. that hasn't really happened, I don't, I don't think, in any of the new generation stuff. It's been, yeah, it's been years since that's really happened. But what people do at airports, you can, uh, like so many people with metal implants, you can let security know in advance you need to be screened annually exactly. because you have implanted metal. Yeah. But if you happen to get, you know, pushed through the security thing and it sets it off, it's not harmful to okay. your device. They'll just say, oh, you know, we need to screen you. And uh, about sweating that you mentioned, if I get a little bit hot, today, for example, I was a little hot, I felt that I sweat a little bit. So, what should I do if that happens? Just, you know, cool yourself off. That's okay. I just okay. don't want, you know, people to just, you know, I've had uh, patients who for one reason or another either exercise way too much and become yeah. drenched in sweat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or people with more severe um, generalized dystonia, then you don't have a so-called dystonic storm. Yeah. Where the stress of the surgery, yeah. they have you know huge full body contractions, yeah. and and then become very sweaty, and that can threaten me. So you know, all the bandages come off, and that can be very traumatic. So look, don't worry if it's a little bit right. I yeah. just don't want you to deliberately be outside and Got you know where it's uh, you know ninety five degrees. Got it. Yeah. And again, also in line with airport, he can fly in like a month or Absolutely. Two or so. um, the only restriction on commercial aviation is really in those first, the next three days because of the intracranial air. Yeah. Right? Yes. That air yeah. can expand and contract with pressure changes and yeah. you, don't, you can feel it. It's unpleasant. Oof. So, uh, but that'll be gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, 
so you can come stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more acronyms for you. We have this device. Uh -huh. It's called a PTM, PTM, a patient telemetry module. Okay. And so you have one of these devices for each of your, your sides. So this is for your left one. Okay. For your left uh, stimulator in yeah. your chest. And they're used to connect to it. They can change stimulation settings, uh -huh. stimulation groups, and they're also used to recharge your device as okay. well. And we have another connection for that. It's a little donut paddle. We call it the mm -hmm. RTM, the recharging telemetry module. Mm -hmm. And so to recharge, you plug it into the bottom Oops. of this mm -hmm. PPM. And then you position this paddle over your stimulator okay. with the goal of the center of the donut being right over your device in your chest. Okay. And you will start the process on this device too. Oh, so, so the, 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 the those remote. aren't the batteries, the white things. No, they aren't. They're, oh. Yeah, they're just used for data collection. That's just the data collection. Yeah. So the batteries are in him. Yep. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. I had I thought that he was saying that he was gonna have to like, he he the batteries were like removable and he was gonna charge Could them. No, 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 no. That, that yeah. would be interesting. I was like, <laughs> that's what I was like. How does this work? Is it like contact? Like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can actually take these off. Yeah, why don't you take them off and just show how you recharge? Yeah. So mm. this is actually what Bobby's showing now is the recharging okay. using the doing that. Okay, so you don't have very many off buttons to press on this controller. You have these up, down arrows, then you have a silver button on the top. Uh -huh. um, typically you'll just be using these arrows. And so usually I press an arrow to wake up the screen. Okay. And you're, you're at a lock screen to start. Mm -hmm. And so to start the recharging process, you wanna have this plugged in at the bottom. And then this is a touch screen, so you're just going to press and hold on that lock symbol. Uh -huh. And then it'll take you to the screen that says position yeah. the recharger over your device. Mm -hmm. And you just press continue. And this is for your left side, so I'm just going to position this over here. Usually it takes some trial and error and practice to find the right position. Mm -hmm. A uh, good way to position the cable. I can give you some tips on that. Okay. And yeah, it, it's pretty picky on the position, but it'll let you know if it's not ideal. So once you put it down, you're gonna press continue. Mm -hmm. And it'll say check and be the charger. That's what it looks like. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And look at. These still oh, looking for it. Yeah, it'll, it'll look for it for a little bit. I thought maybe this is not the right location. What's that? Maybe it's not in the right location, that's why it gives it. Yeah. No? So it, sometimes it's pretty quick when it finds a connection. Other times you have to kind of move it around a little bit. Now it's saying check in recharge quality. It's like yeah. that move is good. And we're off to a good start. We're connected and we're recharging. Um, you can see two battery levels. At the top, it says 50%, that little square controller looking box, and that's this device's battery. Yeah. And this is my device, this is the battery of the, uh, this device. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you got it. PTM. This is PTM. PTM, this is. And that's you and your stimulator. It's at 80%, so that's pretty good. It'll probably last, I don't know, maybe two weeks without any data mm. recording or anything. I see, okay. Um, you can see it's saying recharging and excellent. So this is a great position. And let me demonstrate if you're in a not so great position. Say so move it down, it'll beep at you, mm -hmm. tell you to reposition. You can either press try again or just try to find that spot again. And usually when you get it, it'll go back to the screen. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you guys what it looks like. Oh, cool. This is the battery for this device. Yeah. And then that's his stimulator, which is at his 90% now. has the recharging quality there. 
and then if we can move it up, I'll show you this screen, and you can just, you can hit try again, or you can just move it back to the spot. And this is a lot easier when he's laying down. Yeah, yeah. When you're sitting up, it's a little harder to get the right spot. So then there's, that says left, so there's, you can't use the left one on the right one. Um, you can't, no. Okay. So they are side specific. So, yeah, so it's retarding now. This may not take too long. I'll just put it down for now. But if your battery goes all the way down to zero, it takes about an hour and a half to fully recharge. So usually it's best if you're watching a show, you just put these paddles over your neck and just have them set up and keep still for a little while. It's usually what works pretty well. Bobby, how often do you have to charge? Yeah. Oh, yes. I believe it has two to three full recharges for the device on there in terms of its battery level. But most patients just plug it into a wall after they recharge about half an hour. And I'll show you the cable for that. So we have these briefcases for you. That's very really nice, yeah. Yeah, and we have, um, you can put all the devices in here. There's some manuals if you want to read, mm -hmm. and there's also another strap that you can potentially oh, cool. use as an option. We have two different straps. We'll give you okay. some patients for some or for others. Okay. Let's grab this to demonstrate. So here's the recharging cable. It just I plugs see. into the wall, and you plug this at the bottom. Cool. There's only one input, so you can only do one at a time. And yeah, also on these. It's like a video controller, uh, game controller yeah. input thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then on the back, you can, right now it has a rechargeable battery, but if you kind of push and slide down, oh, you cool. can put double A's in here. Oh, if good to know. If it's ever dead and yeah. you need to recharge, or, Changes. That was definitely a concern. I was like, what if we lose electricity or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So that's an option. Cool. So we got that side going. You guys have any questions so far? The straps are like um, like the ones that were holding the other, the blue one? Yeah, we actually do have one that's like it. And we have uh, a, a black one as well. Okay. But For like the chargers. Um, yeah, for holding these yeah. donut paddles. Let me grab the blue one to show you. Mm -hmm. um, this strap works well for most patients, but there's also a simple approach to it I can demonstrate. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we have a, a counterweight if you're only doing one side oh. at a time. But yeah, you just wear it over your neck as oh, well, like and then you put, you put it in. Right there. That's great. Yeah. So you could just wear them both. Mm -hmm. Some patients actually prefer just wrapping it around your shoulder. Yeah. You okay. can do that as well. Okay. And it's kind of have like a rubbery um, surface that will kind of stick. Uh -huh. So you can just have it set up like that. Nice. Uh -huh. So now we'll go ahead and try the other side. Deep brain stimulation has been a blessing for my father. We now wish that he had gotten it sooner, but maybe it was meant to be. He wouldn't be the person he is now without his dystonia, but now he deserves to be free. I sometimes joke that he's a cyborg now, and often find myself wondering why he is staring at me. Except it isn't that he is staring. I'm just not used to him being able to directly look at me. Thank you, Dr. Starr and everybody at UCSF. You performed a miracle. <laughs> <laughs>